Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Hero Engine tutorial series. In this tutorial series, we will be covering how to create an MRPG from scratch uh, and we'll mostly just be using the stock assets. However, for those of you that do have a commercial license, I will be showing you how to get assets into the engine from Speedtree and through DS Max or Maya. Okay, so the first thing, um, if you would just like to try out Hero Engine and don't already have it, uh, you can go and sign up, it's free, for the free sandbox where you can edit, but you cannot, uh, none of your work will be saved. Or you can buy a license, uh, you can check their site, I believe the price is around 5000 USD. You can buy a Hero Cloud license, uh, you can buy a full Hero Engine license as well if you happen to have the money for that. Alternatively, you can get a Hero Cloud Basic and you can apply for that and maybe possibly get into the uh, early testing for it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is this is our starting area. Uh, I would have expected that you would have uh, followed the instructions in the email and logged in and created a quick character. Uh, I didn't show up to that point. However, that bit is pretty simple. Okay, so now we need to create a new area. So we'll go over here into our organizer, right click, create new area, and we will call this tutorial area, and we'll hit OK. Alternatively, you can click create new, and then you can call this tutorial area. And for some reason, it's not populating. It may take a second. Alright, I'm just going to call this something else. Tutorial test. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry, I previously had a tutorial area, so I guess it's still in there and I have to delete it out of the... Uh, I have to use the other tool to get rid of it. Alright, so... And we're going to want to go to the instance and edit instance. So we'll be in edit mode. Alright, so while that's done that, um, I should mention that an area, if you want it to be completely seamless, should be no larger than one kilometer and should be probably roughly around 500 uh, meters in size. All right, so this is our this is uh, this is our starting area. All right, if we go over to the area tab, we'll notice that we have rooms and we will cover these in a separate tutorial. But for right now, we're just going to cover this interface right here, and then that will be it. It will conclude this tutorial. And it been a nice introduction. So if you want to run around as your character, you can just use WSAD or hold both mouse 1 and mouse 2. And you can hold shift if you would like to run. Yes, it does have sprint. Okay, so first off we have the game, or the character mode. This is for dropping in the game and it is the tilde key. Next we have the camera fly mode, which is 1. Uh, this allows you to Uh, obviously fly around the scene and it's probably where you'll spend most of your time when you're editing because while you can actually edit from your character it's rather painful so you probably won't be doing that. Next we have the select tool which allows us to select objects in our world. We have the translate tool. We also have the select and rotate which can rotate our character as you can see. And we have the scale tool, and I'm not going to scale him because it doesn't snap back until the next restart. Well, actually, you know what? Whatever, screw it. I'll just make him really big. There we go. And then we have the select and dynamic place. This is really useful for uh, getting an object perfectly aligned on another object. And then we have the width, depth, and height tool, which we will cover when we start using the water tools. Then we have the terrain tool, which if we click it, a little window will pop up, and we can close out of that. You can also get to it through the Windows panel. All right, and then we have the coordinate space of the selected object, which you like to be in world space or local space. Then we have the filters, 
which let's jump back to filters real quick. This allows you to, as you can see, you can disable whether or not you can select or even see an object. Then we have the snap tool, which allows you to snap objects and place them on a grid. And you can control the grid snap and the rotation snap. The library, if you click that, um, essentially has all the assets that you have available to you. And we'll cover how to add assets to the library and actually navigate it in a later tutorial. And we'll close that. And last but not least, you can add or remove buttons or customize it however you like. So it's fairly customizable. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the properties panel. I'm going to drag this out and yay, I closed out the whole thing. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm actually going to use the terrain panel now as a nice test. Um, as you noticed, uh, like if you ever use Visual Studio or anything, anything is dockable. So I'm going to actually go down here and I'm going to dock it right beside the properties panel. And so now I have the terrain tool and I can just pull it up whenever I would like. Or I can just switch back over to the properties or the environment or assets or render settings or area or organizer. All right, so that concludes this very basic introduction. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll, we'll begin to cover things like uh, terrain editing and object placement and snapping and parenting. And eventually, we will get into HeroScript, which should be pretty fun and exciting for everyone. And then we'll begin creating a very simple MORPG. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, stop by my forum if you have any questions, or you could stop by the Hero Engine forums. Check the description below for uh, the link to that as well. Uh, please follow me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date with what new tutorials I'm doing or anything else as well. I also have a Facebook fan page or a group page where you can you know, submit requests without actually having to go to my own forum. And I also have a Steam group as well, so there are a variety of ways to get a hold of me if you have any questions. Alright, so that concludes this tutorial. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one.